use mini test because it's already available in Ruby 1.9. And we'll go back to the examples and grab that. Do a very simple assertion just to get us going. So if I run this now, go to sprout and run our spec. This is great. Uninitialized constant sprout because this is a good starting point. And what I'm going to do is just redirect a standard error to standard out and put that into watch so that it just keeps running it every every two seconds. I think so. We've got a constant stream of of what's broken right now. So I'm going to start by just implementing the, the spare code right here in the test file uh, just to get us started because there's going to be so little code to begin with. I think this is going to be easiest. And then as, as it grows bigger, we'll split it out into its own file a bit at a time. So now I've got a new message, initialize constant reactor. That worked. Now I've got another new message, undefined message listen on the reactor. Now that listen takes a host and a port. Okay, now I've got an, an, a more interesting one. Undefined method on for no class line 18. So that's here. Um, this test called the listen method on reactor expected to get back a server instance. Well, basically expected to get back uh, something that responded to the on method, which is how we're going to set up callback. So we've got to start there. We know that listen needs to create a listening socket. So we, why don't we start there? We know that we're going to need to require a socket for doing anything with sockets, as I mentioned in the book. Uh, so we'll just simply use the TCP server constructor and get something. Now we get a new message, undefined method on for TCP server. That makes sense because we returned, we returned this listener socket directly from this method as opposed to wrapping it in an internal class. Um, so let's go ahead and, and make that class. It's going to be a class called server, and all it needs is a socket. So we'll return server.new with that socket. Now, undefined method on for sprout server. The way we're going to set up these, uh, these callbacks is through a gem called events. I'll give you a quick demo of how it works. So events is a, a gem that replicates the Node.js event emitter API, which is how Node.js uh, does event callbacks. So the way you do it is you have a class, and you'd include events, events emitter. And then, so then you create a new instance of that class, and you define callbacks on it. So we saw accept in the test file. We can say foo on accept do client, we'll just print it. And then the way that that callback gets triggered is you emit an event on that object, you give it the event name, and you pass it any parameters. And if we run that, you can see it prints me. And it printed me because here I set up the callback on that event name to just print the argument it gets. And here I, I triggered that that event or emitted that event and passed it this this as the argument and as, as you'll see when we start implementing sprout you can set up um, multiple callbacks for the same event this is going to come in pretty useful this one will just print the same thing twice let's say and so there we see me and Mimi so we emitted the event once but both callbacks were called so we're going to be making use of that um, and so the whole point of that was so that I could go ahead and, and include that module inside our, our server class, which just wraps a socket, and that's going to get this test passing. Great, so now we're a, new, a new message, undefined method start for the reactor. So it, it's gotten past this callback stage, now it's ready to start the reactor. Cool, so we have passing test, it says, but we really haven't made an assertion yet. We're not actually doing anything interesting. 
So let's just uh, do something really simple here. We'll use echo and netcat to send a message to uh, localhost 4481. We'll send foo there. That's where this, this guy's listening. And we know it's going to come back with a new line, so we'll strip it and then say that must equal foo. So that, that's basically just testing that our echo service actually echoes back what we sent to it. Now if we run this again, it says it's still passing, but if you don't watch the clock, you'll notice that it's not updating anymore. And so I'm just kill that for now. The reason is that this command uh, is actually blocking. It's blocking the test. So what we did here with reactor.listen is we, we initialized a listening socket we put it in listen mode, right? And so now here, when Netcat tried to connect to it, Netcat's connection went into the listen queue, but our server doesn't actually accept any connections yet. It just leaves them in the listen queue. So Netcat is waiting, and it's probably going to time out after a minute or so, but it's waiting in the listen queue, waiting to be accepted. So that's why we have this thing blocking here. So what we're going to need to do is actually, in reactor.start, we're going to have to go ahead and and start uh, listening for incoming connections. And of course, we can do that using select. So if you recall from the book, select takes three arguments. What you want to, uh, what things you want to monitor for being readable, what things you want to monitor for being writable, what things you want to monitor for exceptional, uh, exceptional stuff like out of band data, and then optionally a timeout. And right now, we only care about this one. So what we want to do is we want to monitor, right now all we know about is the server. We want to monitor that and when select says it's readable, that means there's a connection we can accept. So let's go readable and we'll just discard the other stuff that comes in. What do we pass in here? Well, here we're going to need to actually store a reference to this guy so that whenever we create a listening socket, we store a reference to it and we can uh, pass it in the select. So I'll set up this array to handle that. And you may notice that I call it streams instead of sockets or something. The reason is that this particular method is socket specific. It's about listening sockets. But select um, works equally well with sockets, files, pipes, any kind of IO object. So I'm using the word stream to denote any of these things as opposed to just calling it sockets. So right now we're working with sockets, but in the end we should be able to use uh, use Spirit equally well with things that aren't sockets but are but are streams. So we've got a list of streams and then when we create a server we need to put it into the list of streams and then we'll still return it. 